Rev up your engines! Alric says I got an 06 Chevy Impala recently. It was having problems. It was driving in reverse and wouldn't go forwards. Then I put transmission fluid in, and it moves and drive, but when I push the gas, speed doesn't go up and it won't move any faster. Well, unfortunately, your transmission shot. Yeah, it's a Chevy Impala. It's 13 years old. Most of them never made them that long anyways. They're such junk. You drive a transmission low on fluid. This is why I always warn people to make sure if you got a fluid leak to fill it up, fix the leak, and not have to worry about it. Once the fluid level gets too low beyond a certain parameter, wear occurs inside an automatic transmission. And yours, it's probably totally internally destroyed now. If it won't go when you step on the gas forward, the system has just been destroyed. And really, on an 06 Impala, it's really not worth the money that you'd have to put into the thing. If it's in decent shape otherwise, you might gamble with a used transmission from a junkyard if you can find one that'll put one in for six, seven hundred dollars. But uh, really, to repair that car, that's more money than the thing's worth. King is for good. Hey, Scotty, how long can I let my car sit in the garage without using it? Can something bad happen if I don't drive it for a week? A week generally isn't going to mean all that much. The only thing that can happen, and it can happen in some modern cars, if you've got a real swanky, fancy car that's got all these electronics on it, like a Mercedes S-Class that has over a hundred separate computer modules in it. It can actually drain the battery just by running itself sitting there. But most cars, a week isn't going to hurt anything. If you're going to keep a car for six months or more, yeah, then you got to start thinking about storing stuff, putting on a trickle charger, or disconnecting the battery. There's all kinds of stuff you'd have to do that. But for one week, it's really not going to do all that much on most cars, especially if the batteries in good shape. I mean, let's say you're going to store your car for a week somewhere, like out in the woods or something, where you go tramping around. Then I'd say, what the heck? Disconnect the negative battery terminal when you take off. You know for sure the battery's not going to be drained. If you're in the middle of nowhere, you know we get stranded. But normally, yeah, you don't have to worry about it for a week. Tiger 205. Scotty, what's the difference between diesel engine oil and petrol engine oil, or as we call it, gasoline engine oil? Diesel engines are higher pressure because they ignite the fuel by pressure alone with no spark. Gasoline engines have lower compression engines because the spark plug sparks and creates the flame that makes the gasoline ignite. Since they do compression only in diesel engines, they end up having a lot more after effects of unburned fuel that are a lot more caustic than what a gasoline engine. The gasoline engines burn the gasoline more fully than a diesel. Not only do the diesels have to have a thicker oil that's better for the higher pressure. They also have to have additives that can clean all that soot and those other things that the unburned diesel fuel create that gasoline engines don't. So there's special oil just for diesels, and gasoline ones have different additives to theirs. In a pinch, if you were stuck in the middle of nowhere, and the only thing there was gasoline oil for diesel or diesel oil for gasoline, you could put a quarter or two in. I mean, it beats blowing the engine because there's no oil in it. You want to make sure you use the right oil for the right engines because they're designed that way. Kind of sounds bizarre, but if you got a gasoline engine and you put the diesel oil in it, one, it's probably too heavy a viscosity. But the other thing is, it actually cleans too well. And you do want a little bit of buildup on the piston rings and stuff on a gasoline engine. If you have a really good cleaner and it cleans it whistle clean, they will actually start to burn oil, get some blow by that they wouldn't have gotten in the first place. So put the diesel oil in the diesel engines and the gasoline oil in the gasoline engines and leave it at that. <laughs> the engineers know what they're doing. X2C Diamonds. Scotty, I've been thinking about getting a newer Celica for a cheap, reliable project car. It's an 03 Celica an hour for me, but the engine knocks and has a bent rod. Would it make it home or should I get a trailer? Get a trailer. You're talking about an hour. You can get one of those trailers you can hook up pretty cheap at those rental places. I'd go that route rather than get stranded somewhere. Since the engine's knocking and it's got a bent rod, look around for one of those used Japanese engines from Japan and just put the whole engine in. I did that for my son's Celica a decade ago. It was great. I paid 500 bucks for the engine, put it in, and it ran like a clock. To rebuild those engines, there are so many things that can go wrong. You really need a machine shop to do it right. You're better off just buying one of those used Japanese engines because they don't drive much in Japan. Most of those engines have like 15, 20,000 miles on them and they got a lot of life rather than trying to rebuild something. Unless you really want to take one apart and rebuild it, just realize that modern engines are complex and the parts for them aren't cheap. You don't want to buy Chinese made rods and bearings and valves. You want to buy the Toyota ones on that and they're expensive. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.